Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sejahtera. Uh, I would like uh, to talk about the International Civil Aviation uh, Framework. And uh, we begin from the International Civil Aviation Organization. You can see on the, uh, the, the screen on the corner, top corner. Those are International Civil Aviation Organization. And <coughs> <clears throat> what happened is in uh, 1944 in Chicago, 54 nations sat down uh, in the convention. They're discussing what the uh, civil aviation uh, cooperation in the world, especially among the member states. Uh, ironically, those 1944 is a war, during war, still a, people still at war. And these uh, ambassadors from the 54 nations uh, sacrificed sacrifice their life to come to Chicago to meet and discussing about this international aviation. So, in the 1919, uh, in 1944 convention, uh, they call it as the uh, Chicago Convention 1944. In the convention, they published documents where they, they have some of the document to agree on those. Uh, decision made in 1944. Uh, there is a convention. Uh, you can get the original copy of the convention from the, IQ, uh, from the Google. It's a very interesting document. This original document is been around in the web. Uh, those documents contain uh, several parts, chapters, and articles, which basically the framework of the international uh, civil aviation. And then uh, in the convention, uh, okay, uh, the, the, what is most important thing from the convention? Uh, IQ publish uh, standard and common practices and how to do things, how to issue self a, how to uh, how to issue uh, uh, personal licensing, what requirement for a personal licensing to be issued. So those are they call it standard and common practices. There are nineteen of them. Uh, the one that basically we used to refer to is Annex 1, is for personal licensing, Annex 6, aircraft operation, Annex 8, aircraft air readiness, uh, Annex 13, aircraft accident investigation, and the current one is Annex 19, which is safety management. So those annexes are standard and recommended practices. Standards mean that it's not legal because IQ is not legal, it's not legislative body. Uh, they are just an uh, uh, agency under the United Nations. Uh, and they have convention meeting and they really open uh, some issues. And from the issues, they come up with the standards for the member state to, to follow. So what is expect expectation is, uh, as uh, because as, as we said again, uh, this uh, uh, Chicago Con Convention 1944 is uh, an international treaty. So every state who sign off to be uh, agree to the treaty shall ratify the ratification by uh, making the adopting and adapting adopt and adapt the uh, annexes, the standard and recommended practices as their country law and regulations. So uh, obviously the IQ also in the article respected. During the convention, they respect the country sovereignty. So it means that there are some other law and legislation which may not be uh, complying direct to the annex. Then the country shall uh, notify the IQ that they are unable to comply. IQ will take note of that and publish those uh, uh, publish those declaration in the another document which the member state will, able, will be able to see uh, which of each state compliance status and what area of non-compliance. I believe it's very important if you are dealing with a state and we know exactly what is their country uh, compliant to the IQ uh, standard and common practices. So the standard and recommended practices uh, when we come the law and regulation of the country that should be implemented uh, by the National Aviation Authority, which is like in Malaysia, is a Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia. It used to be the Department of Civil Aviation of Malaysia. And the US is Federal Aviation Administration. In 
Europe, the, basically they contract it out to the EASA. And the implementation of the law regulation will be uh, audited by the uh, IKO itself. Because as a member state, you ratify, you declare you are complying to the standard recommended practices, and some area you don't comply, you declare it, and now you have to show you implement it. You show that the, those standard recommended practices is, is already in your law and regulation, and you implemented it. So this one, the audit is basically focused on effective implementation. Effective implementation of law and regulation. That's why uh, Malaysia has been audited for four times. I uh, have experienced three times audit already. Uh, then uh, what happened is the first, uh, just like e-auditing uh, supplier, you send a questionnaire. So the, we, we got a very thick set of questionnaire. Basically, the questionnaire leading to how much you adopt and adapt the standard and recommended practices and whether you have made a declaration if you are not uh, uh, adopting adapted uh, the standard recommended practices so once they understand your compliance status uh, again the standard recommended practices they will come to the country and they will sample out to the industry they sample out the training organization, they go to the airlines, they go to the part of fire maintenance organization, they go to continuing awareness management organization, just to see how well the CEA uh, basically implemented the rule. Not implemented the CEA is basically for those organizations who apply for the approval. And there's a law how to be approved, then whether CEA really uh, go through the regulation, make sure those uh, organizations comply to the law and regulation of which has been set up by the by Malaysia itself. So that is how the, the audits is all about. That's why the audit they call it effective implementation. If you are not implementing the, your own law and regulation uh, uh, effectively and uh, and the worst is you're not complying at all, then it will be non-compliant report. So non-compliant report will be part of the RQ audit report of the country. So it's not very good because uh, it will reflect the country uh, 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 civil aviation safety, the, safety uh, the, the health of the civil aviation of the country because they got so many. At one time, there's one country, there are 29 non-compliant. And uh, the following, following the audit, uh, if we come and audit, they don't break the country. So basically, uh, it's not uh, KO come audit, it does not have any like uh, sanction, they don't sanction, they don't downgrade you, it's nothing. Just a report to say the health and the status of your uh, safety, aviation safety, aviation, aviation safety, I mean that how well the, I mean the industry comply to the regulation, how well your regulation uh, adapting and adopting and adapt, adapting the standard recommended practices, practices and how well the country, the authority of the country basically uh, following the law regulation to manage the safety of the of organization uh, in aviation uh, industry. So that's basically the framework. So this framework is uh, basically uh, quite standard uh, where most of the country I mean, all the country, only three countries, which is not ratifying the, the International Treaty, Chicago Convention, 1944. Uh, and I believe when I search through, uh, this is the most uh, ratified convention in the world. Most countries ratify to this because everybody is expecting by air travel. And uh, you ratify, and then you uh, there, there are, uh, you want you ratify, ratify you have to bring it to the country law regulation or the standard recommended practices. So in Malaysia, the law and regulation uh, is uh, bring it to the country through uh, an act of parliament. The parliament published uh, Civil Aviation Act 1969, which uh, uh, mandating or empower the minister to make regulations. So the Section 3 of Civil Aviation Act 1969 says that ratification of the ratification of the Chicago Convention 1944 to take effect 
The word is to take effect of Chicago Convention 1944, where Malaysia became member in 1958. Because we got independent in 1947, and we became member state in 1958. Then the minister made law, the minister made mention civil aviation regulations. And the current uh, issue is uh, Malaysia Civil Aviation Regulation 2016. And there are subsequent small amendments in between. But it's not total amendment. So total amendment is in 2016. The initial one, the initial one is Malaysia Civil Aviation Regulation 1996. And then total and reissue uh, Malaysia Civil Aviation Organ uh, Regulation 2016. Then, uh, if there are any uh, regulation which is uh, not sufficient, uh, not fully explained, the compliant, then the CEO of the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia has given the power under the Act, uh, Section 24.0, to write five items. If they all these five uh, notices, circular information, directive, and requirements. So those enhance the current national civil aviation regulation. For example, we're talking about unmanned aircraft system. So, the American aircraft system is mentioned in Regulation 142 and 140 and 146. So, so, and also we have uh, talking about accident investigation. So, aircraft accident investigation, there is, uh, there is a, uh, uh, there is a, uh, on, uh, there is a directive issue uh, to detail the process of aircraft accident investigation and mention. Similarly, with evidence as MRO 145 and licensing. So, there is a special notices issued uh, by the CEO uh, to the industry in the form of the notice. Notice, in the, the notice is basically issued under the law, so it's a part regulation and punishable similarly to non compliant to the uh, to regulations. So this is a whole framework uh, of industry and hopefully uh, some of you have some understanding of how this uh, Malaysia law regulation came about. It was uh, from the standard and recommended practices and also how it was brought to the country, brought to the country by the Act in the Parliament and what happened if we are unable to effectively comply to the our own law regulation which is based on the ICO standard and government practices. There is a bad report uh, because I see uh, the IQ or audit and carry out audit and surveillance in the country of the effective implementation and uh, unable to effectively implement the law regulation. Then you we have a report. So some country they have a report to, which really a uh, switch statement, uh, significant safety issue. So some some report like that basically has huge implication to the country because the member state will have some thought of dealing with the country with having some kind of report. So basically, there's a discussion about the International Civil Aviation Framework and see you again on other sessions. Thank you.